Good morning, everyone. Good morning, classmates, especially Ma'am Josefa. Welcome to Current Trends, Issues, and Problems in Educational Management. Today, we will present to you our topic, which is all about distance learning. I'm Mrs. Lucille Joy Panyergo. Together with me is Mom Mary Ann Asilar, and we are the presenters of this topic. Topics to be discussed are What is distance learning? Common types of distance learning. How is distance learning different from regular learning? What are the advantages and disadvantages of distance learning? And what to look for a distance learning system? By the way, what is a distance learning? It is any format of education provided to students who do not need to be physically present in a classroom. Previously, materials were sent to students but now, materials provided and received instruction via computer conferencing, video recordings, internet, TV and radio broadcasting, and other electronic means. Also, distance learning is called distance education, e-learning, and online learning. Form of education in which the main elements include physical separation of teachers and students during instruction and of the use of various technologies to facilitate student-teacher and student-student -student communication. Now, what are the types of distance learning? One, we have synchronous distance learning. 2. Asynchronous distance learning 3. Hybrid distance learning 4. Computer-based distance learning 5. Fixed-time online courses and 6. Video conferencing When we say asynchronous learning, it is when all the students learn together at the same time, but the instructor is at another location. It often features video or teleconferencing that connects teachers and learners digitally. So, asynchronous learning is when a less connected but also less constrained format. Instead of live online lessons, students are given learning tasks with deadlines. They then self-study to complete the assignments. About hybrid learning. It is a specific type of blended learning where students are learning the same lesson in real time, but some of the students are physically present while others are learning remotely. Four. Computer-based distance education is a fixed-time, synchronous lesson on computers, usually a computer lab. This is the most common in existing institutions that already have access to the necessary devices. Fixed-time online courses are a type of synchronous course that required online users to all visit a specific virtual location at a set time and place. Example of this is webinar. Unlike more rigid synchronous lessons, this does not allow students from anywhere in the world to connect and interact online. Six, video conferencing is a common way for teachers in live lessons. This could be a one-on-one -on -one session or a class-like scenario 
in which multiple students connect to the teacher live. How is distance learning different from regular learning? Distance education is clearly different from regular education in terms of a student or teacher's physical presence. It translates into increased freedom for both learners and educators, but also requires higher degrees of discipline and planning to successfully complete the course study. The enhanced freedom of remote learning is most clearly seen in the fact that students can choose courses that fit their schedules and resources. And in the case of digital learning, students can also choose location and teaching style that best suit their needs. The belief of its freedom, however, is the discipline required to make the most of the lessons. Students need to self-motivate in order to actually get the work done, especially in systems that don't require them to be present in some specific time or place. Teachers also need to be better organized with contingencies should their students need additional explanation, especially if they are not teaching. What are the five ways open learning helps students? One, we have open accessibility. Two, freedom of time. Three, freedom of pace. Four, freedom of place. And five, open programming. Good day, Dr. Travina and classmates. This is Mary Ann S. Asilar, one of the Octomanons teaching from Aton Central Elementary School, presenting the continuation report of Mrs. Lucelle Joy Paniergo, which is all about distance learning. What are the advantages of distance learning? Distance learning benefits are more obvious than ever. Flexible, easy to access, less cost. Flexibility. The top benefit of distance education is its flexibility. Students can choose when, where, and how they learn by selecting the time, place, and medium of their education. For those who want direct, live access to teachers, there are video conferencing options. But for students who may be doing their training around a job or other responsibilities, a more relaxed schedule may work better. There are options to match virtually anyone's needs. Easy access. Whether due to remote location or being differently able, some students lack basic access to educational facilities. Remote learning programs offer every student the opportunity to learn and improve themselves in the environment they find the most effective. Least cost. Thanks to the scalable nature of digital learning especially, distance learning is driving down the cost of education. Online degrees are becoming almost commonplace and there are even accredited online-only schools that can eliminate expensive infrastructure. Overhead and get straight to the teaching. What are the disadvantages of distance learning? Number one, ease of cheating. Number two, does not give the student the traditional campus socialization experience. And last, can be an accredited or diploma mill. What to look for a distance learning system? Number one, ease of use. Simplicity is the key. Any system you adapt to either teach or learn should be user-friendly for everyone involved. This means a clear interface and set of certain essential features that include digital whiteboarding and annotation, 
media creation and sharing, screen recording with audio that directs students to teacher communication, and multi-device compatibility. Two, accreditation. The credibility of a remote learning platform is really a combination of the teacher and the platform itself. For learners, it's important to note how well organized that the platform's credentials are. It's important to know what kind of accreditation system that can bestow on your behalf or on the behalf of the school. For academic degrees or professional qualifications, recognition by outside regulatory bodies will likely be necessary. Three, schedule. As most distance learning systems are made to be fairly flexible in this regard, the course schedule has a lot to do with its content and not the system. Still, it's an important factor to consider when choosing a course. First, is it a synchronous or asynchronous course? Number two, are there deadlines or not? Number three, how long do you have to complete the entire course? And number four, does the course schedule match yours? For the conclusion, remote education is certainly not a magic bullet and there will always be a place for in-class learning. At the same time, distance learning still has a lot of untapped potential to reach students where they are and connect educators and learners in new ways. From increased flexibility to new learning style, it seems that the future of learning will be as diverse and the time and place as it will be and thought. Thank you. This is all for my report.